everybody and welcome to the TESOL program. We are going to cover chapter 3, which is proficiency levels and learning styles. I will be your instructor today. My name is Alicia and welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, what I would like you to do is please follow along with me. I'm going to summarize the chapter and add a little bit more information to help you get through it. Okay, so please take out your notes, take out the chapter, and follow along with me. What we'll do, let's begin with proficiency levels. Now, a good question that comes to my mind is, why are proficiency levels in English important? From my experience, they're important because they help you understand where your learner is in the English language. So what we do, look at your chapter, we break them down by different levels. So if you just take a look here, we list them off by about five different levels. You can see we have beginner, elementary, intermediate, upper intermediate, and advanced. Now, this can be a little bit confusing at first. A question I thought early on in my teaching career was, well, what is, where is a beginner to an elementary? Or an elementary to an intermediate? So for me, I picture a scale, and I add numbers to that scale from about 1 to 10. A beginner is kind of a one to three level, whereas maybe an intermediate is a five to six, an advanced more like a nine to ten. Now the most important thing to remember, aside from all of this, is listening to your learner. Listening to their language and understanding that level of proficiency and that level of, of language. So I always ask my learners questions and then listen from there. So if you want as well to expand on the different levels, we go into it a little bit further and if you scroll a bit down on your chapter here, let me go with you, you're going to see something that says some examples of proficiency level name variation. So sometimes there can be what we call a low beginner, or there can also be a high beginner. So again, what was helpful for me is think in numbers. So maybe a low beginner might be one, one to two whereas a high beginner is maybe a three. They've grasped the understanding of the beginner level, and they're almost ready to take it to the next level, which is elementary. So it was easy for me to frame it that way and get you through. But again, again, listen. Listen to your learner, ask questions, and communicate. And that will really help you understand which level they're at. So that's a little bit of the proficiency levels. Read more in the chapter. They will give you more information on each level to help you better understand what each level is about. We can continue to scroll down. You have number two under proficiency levels. So these are example language items. So now we understand proficiency levels as what they are, beginner, elementary, intermediate, etc. Now this portion breaks it down further into the grammatical structures that you might be teaching in your course, in your TESOL, and in, in whatever your teaching career takes you. Uh, so I'll just give you a quick example. We'll do maybe like a low beginner. 
someone in a low beginner might be learning simple tenses like I walk, I run, I go, things like that. So again, listen to the language, listen to them. If they are a low beginner, but they're using, for example, in low intermediate perfect tenses, then maybe challenge your learner, give them a little bit more. But again, I always say, listen to them because a beginner can sometimes surprise you and they might be an elementary. Sometimes they could be an intermediate. And in my experience, sometimes an intermediate can be taken back to beginner. So just make sure you're listening. So that's basically proficiency levels. Um, so just make sure that you read over all sections because there are some keywords in there that are going to be useful for the task section at the end of this chapter. So now I do want to talk more about the myths that you might hear as a teacher. Me as a new teacher, I heard so many different stories. I tell you right now, get rid of all of your assumptions and biases. And most importantly, just listen to your learner and communicate that way. That's the most important. I will allow you guys to read the different myths and what they are on your own. Make sure you underline important keywords and phrases because again, it will be helpful for you in the task section. I am going to just quickly summarize these myths for you uh, so you can have a better understanding. The first myth is called, zero beginners learn mainly by talking. Um, every learner is different. Uh, we cannot categorize them based on these proficiency levels alone. So learning mainly by talking is definitely a myth. Um, incorporate reading, listening, writing. All these different kinds of skills are going to help your beginners a lot. So don't just think talking is the only way. Okay? The next one is called Zero beginners do not need grammar. Now, in communicative um, learning approach, grammar is important because you can help elicit or help bring out um, grammar points as your learner is speaking. It helps them understand what they're saying and helps produce meaning for them which I think is very important. Myth number three, reading is a waste of time for zero beginners. Now, when I was learning French, reading for me was very important because you're able to A, see the grammar and see the grammar structure in that sentence. You can see words, spelling, um, the importance of structure and practice of pronunciation. So make sure, make sure you do incorporate some reading based on the level of your learner. Myth number four, zero beginners don't need textbooks. Now again, every learner is different and I will jump into that with learning styles. But as a teacher, I found incorporating all kinds of listening, reading, writing, um, speaking is important for any proficiency level, not just beginners. So please do incorporate some kind of textbook. If it's not like a book like this, maybe give a simple novel, something they can practice, something they can see and understand the language. Myth number five, 
Authentic materials are always better than prepared. Um, I mean, sometimes in my experience, authentic materials are not always what is happening in the real world. So again, from what I've said this entire talk, use a mixture of everything. So in communicative learning, you can do role plays, authentic materials, add those, and also prepare. I like to prepare my own things. Do improvisation. Um, be fun. Um, bring that kind of thing to your class, and that will really engage your learners. The last myth is teacher talk is always bad. Now, it's not always bad, but what I would recommend is eliciting. Avoid telling or correcting, but bring out elicitation in your learners so that they're thinking and they're learning that way. It's a lot better for them to elicit and get the answer themselves than for you to tell them. But teacher talk is not bad. Communicate. It's a conversation. Have fun with it. Uh, so that's basically proficiency levels. And the next stage we will move into more learning styles. So let's move on to the learning styles part of our chapter three. Uh, we finished proficiency levels. Learning styles are so, so important because Nobody learns the same way. So there are three main types. We've got visual, what do I see? We've got auditory or hearing, what is my teacher saying? What am I listening to? And then we have what we call tactile or kinesthetic. Tactile kinesthetic is touch. What can I feel? What am I doing with my hands? or also hands-on is a good keyword. So think of those three learning styles when you are teaching and try to look for triggers or indicators of your learners and that will help you understand what learning style they are. Things like visual, look for body language. You know, practice your body language, your facial expressions. Are you excited? Are you sad? Frustrated? Use that in your learning. It will help them learn better. Auditory. Make sure you're speaking. Make sure you're looking at people. Make sure your language is clear. Uh, this is very good for auditory learners. As well with tactile. Make sure, I always find, move around the room, um, interact, touch things, have them uh, maybe take notes uh, or do things like that to just help them along with their learning. But in all, the most important thing with learning styles, try to add all of them into your teaching because then you're going to have a great experience with your learners. Now, what I want you to do is just to continue to read uh, more in depth uh, in the chapter about each learning style. I'm going to add a couple more points here that I think are valuable for you to know. So if we go down to the next part, which is number five, called learning strategies in the classroom, these are different strategies you can use to implement the styles of learning. So we have Direct strategies such as memory, you can do maybe rhyming, group work, mnemonics, cognitive strategies, so thinking strategies. Uh, again, it's saying how do learners use their process to think. So maybe outlining, highlighting, or analyzing things. Or you could also use what we call compensatory strategies. So these are things like gestures, pointing, um, I don't know, questions, facial expressions, things like that. Or you can also use what we call indirect strategies. So these are metacognitive strategies, 
effective or emotional strategies or social strategies. So use what works best for you. Um, in my experience, I try my best to incorporate a little bit of everything because then your learners are really going to absorb your information. The last part of this chapter, you're going to find a table under number six. It's a summary of different styles. Please, please, please read this through thoroughly and underline or highlight your keywords. Okay, very, very important. And that's the end of this chapter. Let's take a short break and then talk about the task. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, now I want to talk about the task that you're going to be doing for this chapter three. It's a brief overview, so take a look with me and follow along. I'm just going to summarize the three sections. So you have three. So first section is a matching section on the different student levels. So you're just going to be doing a simple matching exercise, okay? The next section, section two, it's a multiple choice quiz. So you get A, B, C, or D answer. Choose the best answer um, based on your knowledge and based on the chapter. And it's on student levels and learning styles. Then move over to the third section of the uh, task. This one is more of a questionnaire. This is for you. This is for you to identify your own learning style and hopefully help you identify others learning styles. So when you finish each section, what I want you to do is submit your task to me by email or you also can submit it through your account ID. If you have any questions, I'm here. Send me an email whenever you need. Thanks a lot. See you next time.